So in this equation, we've got fractions or rational expressions. Okay. Now we need to get the equation in this form so we can use the quadratic formula. So do you remember how to solve rational equations? Well, I'll help you out here. The first thing we need to do is find a lowest common denominator. And then we multiply across by the lowest common denominator and eventually we can um, get, the, get rid of the fractions. It'll help us to solve the equation. So, um, what is the lowest common denominator? Well, uh, and by the way, first of all, I'm going to write this out so that I can give myself space to multiply with. So 1 equals 3 over x. I'm going to put the plus over here, 2 over x plus 3. Okay. So I'm just going to help you understand what the lowest common denominator is. If I had 3 over 10, you know, plus 2 over 13. Um, so my point is, if x was 10, what would x plus 3 be? What's 10 plus 3? So you'd be t 13, right? So. Anyway, so if I had these numbers, what would the LCD be here, right? What's the lowest common denominator between the fractions? So let's say if I had like something like t equals that of I was solving this. The lowest common denominator would be 10 times 13, or 130, right? Now if I multiplied on this one, I'd go, you know, 10 times 13, and then multiply everything by 10 times 13, right? And if I do that, it helps because then I can cross cancel. As you'll see how the tens would cross cancel and the thirteens would cross cancel to help me solve that equation, right? So this is similar. So the lowest common denominator for this one would be what? Well, just like this is ten times thirteen, this one would be x times x plus three, right? And what I do is I multiply across by the lowest common denominator. So I multiply this by x times x plus three. I multiply this by x and then times x plus 3 and also this one times x and also by x plus 3. Right. So multiply across by the lowest common denominator. In fact you can write this over 1 if you want just to make sure that these guys are at the top not the bottom. Right. And then we can cross cancel common factors just like down here where the tens crossed off. What can we cross cancel on here? Well, the x's, right? They cross cancel. What can we cross cancel here? Well, the x plus 3's, right? So then we get x times x plus 3 equals, and that's a 3 times x plus 3 plus, then we have a 2 times x, right? And now all the fractions are gone from the equation. So, so the, how do you solve equations with fractions? Well, step one, you get rid of them, right? Uh, so now we need to s get this in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. What I want you to do is press pause on the video. The pause button is in the bottom left here of the video. Press pause on the video and do this yourself. Simplify this equation until you have 0 on the right hand side and you've got ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Okay, so I hope you press pause and did it. I'm going to do it quickly. This is a skill you should know at this point, so I'm going to do it quickly. At least you'll see how to do it. So please, if you haven't done it yet, press pause, try it yourself and then check the video. I'm doing it now. So multiply x in, I get x squared plus 3x. I multiply 3 in, I get 3x plus 9, uh, and then plus 2x. Then, so I'm simplifying both sides. I've also got to add like terms if needed. There's no like terms over here, but on the right hand side, I've got a 3x and a 2x. That's 5x, right? Now I'm going to try and get 0 on one side, you see. I need to get 0 on one side. So I need to, I'll leave the x squared over here. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. See that? So that'll give me x squared and 3 minus 5 is negative 2, so minus 2x at 0 equals 9. What do I do now? Now I just need to subtract 9 from both sides. And then I have x squared minus 2x minus 9 is equal to 0, right? And if I have this, I can then find the values of a, b, and c. Now what's the coefficient of x squared here? 
Write it in. Write it down. What's the coefficient of x squared? It is 1. See? So now you can give the values of a, b, and c. What's a, b, and c? a is 1, b is negative 2, c is negative 9. Right? So I have it in the form of ax squared plus b plus c equals 0. This is the quadratic formula. I'm going to write out the formula, but I'm going to use parentheses as usual. That's how I like to do it. Okay, so I'm going to go um, x equals negative parentheses plus or minus the square root of parentheses squared minus 4 times parentheses times parentheses all over 2 times parentheses. Now I'm going to plug in the values of a, b, and c, right? <coughs> so can you plug in the values of a, b, and c here? Press pause if you need more time. So b is negative 2, so you should have a negative negative here, right? And then we've got a negative 2 all squared. a is 1, and c is negative 9, okay? And so we have x equals... Now what's negative negative 2? Positive 2. And what's 2 times 1? That's also positive 2. Then we have plus or minus. And then we just calculate that root, right? So I like to calculate the root over here. So this is root of, now what's negative 2 all squared? Take your time. Isn't it negative 2 times negative 2? What's that? See, once again, when you write things out, it just means you make less mistakes. So that's a positive 4. If you, see, if you make a mistake on a negative sign, then the whole question is wrong. If you make a mistake here, the whole question is wrong. So that's the trick with math, is, is to just take your time, write things out step by step. Don't rush it. Um, don't do a whole bunch of calculations in your head. Just do step by step on the paper, and that means you'll have a good chance of getting the right answer in the end. right? So negative 4 times 1 is minus 4, and then times negative 9. So what does this make? Root of 4. Now what's negative 4 times negative 9? Positive 36. So that's root of, what's 4 plus 36? 40, right? Now we have to simplify this root. And to simplify roots, you've got to split them into their prime factors. So first of all, split it into a pair of factors. Like 40 is 2 times 20, or 4 times 10, or whatever, or 5 times um, 8, whatever, right? I'll just call this 4 times 10, right? And now you split each one of these factors into a pair of factors. And keep going until you have a list of prime factors, right? So what's 4? It's uh, 2 times 2. What's 10? It's uh, 2 times 5, right? And so you've got the 40 split into a list, a list of prime factors, right? Now, we can take, using the product property, we can take roots of part of this. And what we want to do is isolate a couple of numbers that are the same. See that 2 times 2? See that? That's going to be a perfect square, because there's two of them in there, right? So root, and then root times 2 times 5. Root of 2 times 5. Now root of 2 times 2 is of course root 4. What's root 4? Well, it's 2, isn't it? And root of 2 times 5, see these are not the same number, so that's going to be root of 10. Right? Now the square root of 10, if you put that in your calculator, the square root of 10 is this big long number. It's 3.16227766. And it goes on further than that. In fact, it goes on forever. Right? And there's no pattern to it, in fact. So it is an irrational number. Okay? It's a big long decimal that goes on forever. Now, we don't have enough space to write that number out forever. So we're just going to leave it as root 10 without calculating that to the decimal. So we're just going to leave it as 2 root 10. Okay? So we've simplified root 40 as far as 2 root 10 because we've pulled out any perfect squares, right? Um, but we like to write the answer with just the root 10 because we don't want to have to keep writing out this huge big decimal all the time, okay? So um, now we can 
um, divide everything by 2, right? So dividing everything by 2 goes a little like this. If you had two children and a bunch of fruit, well, let's say you had four pineapples and you had six cherries, and you wanted to divide all of that fruit equally among two children, what should each child get? See, most students say that each child should get two pineapples and six cherries each. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Because what they should have, what students should do is they should take the four pineapples and divide it equally among the two children. They should also take the six cherries and divide that equally amongst two children, right? And if they did that, then each child would get two pineapples and three cherries, and that makes sense. I mean, they can't both get two pineapples and six cherries. So most students forget to divide this by two also. And most students are going to forget to divide the 2 root 10 by, by 2 as well, right? Okay, so you got to divide this term also by 2, right? So it's 2 pineapples and 3 cherries for each child, and this is wrong, okay? Similarly, with this thing, we have to divide both terms by 2, right? So we've got um, 2 divided by 2 plus or minus 2 root 10 divided by 2. So we divide each one by 2. And I guess the other trick is, look, see how I wrote that out? See, law students don't bother writing that out. And if, they, if you don't write out this step, you're probably not going to divide this 2 here, or the 2 root 10. You're going to make a mistake. Okay. So 2 over 2 is 1. And the other mistake students make is they'll divide, they'll do this, they'll divide, you know, root 10 over 2 and they'll go 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 10 goes 5 times. Okay, can you see what's wrong with that? See, root 10 is a big long decimal. It's 3.16227766. Root 5 is a totally different thing. It's 2.236067. Like, you can't be just dividing things inside of roots, okay? That's a complete mistake. See, root 10 is actually just a big long decimal, right? It's not the number 10 at all. It's 3.16227766. Okay, that's what root 10 is. It's a big long decimal. You can't divide 2 in there like that. That doesn't make any sense at all. So, so what we have is 2 root 10 over 2. Now, that's kind of like having 2x over 2. How would you divide 2x over 2? Well, you just cross off the 2s, wouldn't you? Right? And you just you're left with x or two apples over two. How would you divide two apples over two? Well, once again, cross off the twos and you're left with one apple, right? Or I'll give you I'll give you a quick one. What is two root seven over two? Can you divide that? What do you get? Two to two goes once here and here, right? So you get root seven, correct? So, what is 2 root 10 over 2? Again, the 2's cross cancel, and you're left with root 10. So, if x equals 1 plus or minus root 10. Now, can you write that as two separate solutions? So, uh, what I want you to do is deal with the plus or minus. Okay? Do you remember how to deal with that? See, plus or minus means plus or minus. It means 1 plus or minus root 10 means 1 plus root 10 or 1 minus root 10. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what I want you to do also is, so we have two solutions. We have 1 plus root 10 or 1 minus root 10. Now, they're two different numbers. What I want you to do is calculate each one as a decimal rounded to four decimal places. Okay. So, we'll go 1 plus on the calculator, something like 1 plus root 10, right? And that's 4.162277. So rounding that to four decimal places is 4.1623. Okay, now can you do this one rounded to four decimal places? So if you do that to 
four decimal so one minus root ten would be negative two point one six two two seven seven. So to four decimal places would be negative two point one six two three, right? Okay. So there so the two different ways, this would be rounded to four decimal places and this would be the exact solution. This is exact because we have to round here, but here if we just leave in the root 10, which these are ra these are um, irrational numbers, um, you know, this is the exact form, okay?